Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get started with this one. Uh, now, it's a bit of a gross one, but who knows when it will come in useful. So, we've got the basic layout that I normally have. So, I've got the sphere, the camera, a plane, three lights, and then a backlight for the backdrop. In the shading tab, we are on uh, viewport shading, or basically real shading. Cycles, render engine, and using my GPU. I've set the samples quite low on the render, uh, sorry, on the viewport, and higher on the render, so we'll get a better view when we render this out. I've also applied a basic principle shader and a material output and plugged them together. So the first thing that I will need to add is a texture coordinate, because I want this to work with the um, sphere. Um, so we're going to take the object value and plug that into the base color. I also need to plug it into somewhere else, but we're going to do this line first. So we'll need a Voronoi texture. We'll drop that on that line. Leave the scale set to 5. Change the feature output to smooth F1. And reduce the smoothness to 0.25. And we actually need to take the distance, sorry, not the color, so that we end up with these black and gray spots. Now, to control the um, intensity of the tones in that, we're going to use a color ramp. And this is actually going to give us the color of the uh, skin and the acne. So we're going to add four additional markers. This one on the left we're going to set to pure white. This one we're going to set as a reasonably light grey. Let's say about 0.45 for now. And you can already see here what's happening. It's kind of isolating those colors. We're going to position that at 0.1 and we'll position the white at 0.05. Next up we need a super bright red. So value all the way to 1, saturation all the way to 1. And that's kind of the really sort of tender spot around the pussy sack. <laughs> it's disgusting isn't it? So we'll drag that over, let's say 0.15. Mm, a bit more actually, 0 0.2, no, nope. 0.175, we'll go there. This next one, we're going to do red again, but we're actually going to drop the value down a bit. Let's say 0 0.5, and we'll put that at position 0.2. Next up, let's grab that red value, but it, this time we're going to drop the saturation down till we get a reasonably soft pink. And then we actually want to copy and paste this. So move your cursor over this color, press Control C like you would do for copy. Select this end one and then Control V to paste it. Uh, hmm. I think I might just move that around a bit so it's slightly creamier. Now these two colors basically here are the actual skin tone. So if you're using a different skin tone, just change these to whatever you need it to be. Uh, now, do I need to change anything else? Yes, okay. So we're gonna change the interpolation mode to be spline. So it's a little softer. Okay, next up, let's deal with the bump. Let's start raising these up. So we're going to take the distance from this Voronoi texture 
and plug it into the normal of the principal shader. We then need to add a bump node and plug it in between. And we need that to go into the height. So the distance from the Voronoi texture is coming into the height of the bump. Now this is crazy right now, so we need to do a few things. First we need to invert it. We'll drop the strength to 0.5 and we'll drop the distance to 0.125. Now I need a bit more control because at the moment it looks like there's just random puffiness. So we're going to add another color ramp in between the Voronoi texture and the bump node. And we will add a darker gray move that over select the white and then add another and basically it kind of mixes in between the two and then select that white again and add another one and we'll bring it over and we're changing that to B spline again so we don't get these hard edges there we go Let's soften it out a bit Just moving the position on that one, which then the, means that one needs to come over as well, I think. Let's say 0.25. And this one I'm actually going to lighten a bit more. Let's say 0.95. Uh, actually, I'm going to change that all the way to white and I'm going to get rid of this one at the end. So we're just left with these four. I think that works. We can come back to that if we need to. Okay, next up we need to add some displacement for pause on the skin. So Shift A, displace, plug that into this displacement on the material output. Now it's gone crazy. So let's drop the mid level down to zero and the scale to 0 0.003. You won't see much happening yet because we've got to plug a whole bunch of other stuff into it. The first being a Voronoi texture. take the distance from that into the height. You might make some stuff out. Uh, we need to take the object value from the texture coordinate and plug that into the Voronoi texture. Make sure this is smooth F1 again. Set the scale to 100 and leave the other two values as they are. Add another color ramp. Take the distance from the top Voronoi texture into the factor. Then add another color ramp. Between the Voronoi texture and the displacement and we're going to mix these two together so we can do that with a mix RGB and basically your two color ramps are going to plug into those leave that set as 0.5 and we're going to choose subtract so you can see now we've got this kind of uh, dimpled effect going on, a bit like pores in your skin. Now for this color ramp set it to B spline and for the bottom one set it to cardinal. Flip the color ramp and then drag the black 
over to about 0.25, or let's say exactly 2 point, uh, 0.25. For this one, we're going to bring the black over Point one two five or point one five point one five will do us, and the white one we're going to crunch in a bit to point five. So what that's doing is it's giving us more of that effect. So we are almost there, but I need to get the roughness from somewhere. So I'm going to take it from here, plug that in there. Get yet another color ramp and plug that in between. Let's move that up out of the way. change the interpolation mode to B spline select the white value and press the plus icon to get us another gray bring that over to position 0.2 or let's say 0.22 and the white value which actually we are it's going to go at 0.9. Now, still a little strong for me. Um, the lighting here is slightly different to the one I rendered out. So let's drop that to 0.001. Now for a little tiny bit more realism, what I'm going to do is increase the subsurface value to 0.1 and set that to a bluish or a light bluish color because we have deoxygenate, deoxygenated blood going through our skin so we need to make sure that we do add that in. Okay, I think that's that just about done. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and isolate some things out. So we've got the original Voronoi texture, which is giving us this black and white. When colorizing that to give us our acne colors with this color ramp, and that's going into the base color of the principal shader. We're then controlling the roughness so that when we look up close, the little pustules of horrible grease are actually shinier than the areas outside. So the blacker areas within this color ramp are shinier and the lighter areas are not. So if I crunch this over a little bit more you can see they become even shinier. Actually let's do that. Um, then this color ramp is basically giving us the information that we need for the bump node and as you can see there that's what's happening with the bump node and the displacement. Um, we can drop that down a little bit maybe actually just to get better. And then down here we have a different Voronoi texture which is all those tiny little dimples which is then crunched using the color ramp probably crunch it a bit more actually and then mixed with this which, which is basically a mask to control where those dots go 
to give a slightly more variation across it and this feeds into the displacement which we can't isolate and that gives us our final material so I hope that has proved useful let me just quickly render that out for you now and there you go that's rendered out the lighting here is quite intense so I could really change that a bit and maybe angle it a bit better or even use some daylight um, but actually my what I might do is increase the scale on the displacement as well just to refine those pores a bit in fact let's do that Let's change the lights a bit. So this one is actually quite intense overhead, so I might move that a little bit and also change its power. That's better, it's slightly less intense. Um, and I think for the plane, We don't actually have a material, so I'll apply a material and let's make it white so we get some bounce back. Let's send that to render now. Okay, there we go. I think that's kind of a quick and rough skin with acne effect that you could use to your advantage. I hope you've enjoyed this in some way, uh, shape or form, and have learned something. If you have, please do remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. I've got a whole plethora of growing, a growing library of uh, material shaders uh, tutorials in a playlist on my channel. So please do go check those out as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching.